Hello, my name is Dr. Daniela Capdebon. Uh, we are going to discuss genetic testing in the future in oncology. The first step I'm going to explore is genomics and genomic medicine relevant to us in primary care in the concept of cancer and family cancers. We are going to go this through considering a case which I have my patient, let's call her Anne, with a concern about the of this kind of the disease. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, about this, we have, for example, two points to consider. The first point is the family history that will help us in many different ways to assess the patient risk. About, for example, to develop this kind of the disease, the different diagnosis to be considered in the family history. And of course, we have to be very, very carefully and be aware about the patient concern, anxiety, and depression that the, can, the patient have. The other point about the family history is about the affected diagnosis and the age of the diagnosis when they have the cancer disease. This is very important and relevant and also it's very important to be aware both sides, the maternal and the paternal sides of the patients. No. Okay, to continue, we are continuing with multifactorial inheritance. In order for us to understand the importance about family history, we must understand the concept of multifactorial inheritance. What we are to say about this? Well, for example, many chronic diseases following in the run in the family, for example, cancer and cardiovascular disease. Other examples could be diabetes, dementia, asthma, inflammatory bowel disease. For this, we have multifactorial inheritance. You used to call the 80 and 85 percent is environment factors. What I'm trying to say with this is while we are in the earth, for example, contamination in the earth, chemical in the earth, or other kind of factors that in the implication of this in develop the kind of cancer is very relevant. The next is polygenic factors, where there are several genes that in individual can affect in a small effect to develop this cancer in the 10 and the 50 percent. <clears throat> it is very important in this both that the multifactors and the polygenetic factors are very, very important to implication in develop different kind of disease. For example, lung cancer and smoking, cervical cancer and HPV, that is make that this person will be increased the percent to develop cancers. And the last one is genetic factor, which is uh, only single chain condition in the third and five percent that have the patient or the person indeed to develop if this gene indeed have any kind of mutation. A further or 10 or 50 percent of all diagnoses of multifactorial condition are likely to have a mixed etiology. This patient has been recognized to have an increased risk through epidemiological study of family with relevant family histories. It is known now through likely that the increased risk result from the effect of multiple, multiple genes, which individually contributes a small increase in risk and their interaction with the environment are factors. This is now a polygenic risk. Therefore, in this post, we can see that the 80 and 85 of patients will not have an increased risk of develop a condition over and above the general population. This patient fall into the near population risk group. As you see in the machine, you can see that the disease family is very important when we consider the patient family history and the patient medical history indeed. Next, we are talking about the risk and assessment to cancer develop. Our role in prim primary care is to take and assess a family history of the patient and the family indeed, in order to identify those patients who will fall into the near popular risk group and those who will have an increased risk over and above the general population. What I'm trying to explain with this is that patient that we are in the above of the general population is when they match with 
uh, family history of cancer, plus environment uh, factors like chemicals exposed to any radiations, comorbidity disease, uh, genes that have any kind of mutations in the patient or in the family that develop any kind of the disease, not just cancers, could be an autoimmune disease, hypertension, and diabetes. To continue to the risk assessment to cancer develop, we have the component of the risk assessment process. We have three points assessment to the psychosocial assessment about the patient, how is the patient life, the family life, how is the patient uh, health, mental health, uh, risk perceptions about any uh, kind of uh, comorbidity that the patient or the family can have. Clinical evaluation is the personal health history about the patient indeed. Overall, if she have or he have any kind of other conditions or disease underlying, uh, for example, could have hypertension, diabetes, and anti-immune disease. The physical examination is extremely important as well because it gives very details, a lot of details about the patients and the family history, which is, is remarkable when we do it a clinical evaluation overall about the patient. And finally, in the third point, we have determination cancer risk, which where we analyze the family history overall and the method we are where quantify uh, quantify the cancer risk. Information provided for patients concerned about family cancer risk. I make a list about the possibility of many uh, things that we can recollect in the consultation. For example, risk factor that come from the family, including the family history about any kind of cancer, the awareness about any kind of information that the patient can have uh, about why the patient come to the consultation, um, they can, you know, uh, request any kind of awareness about breast cancer, bowel cancer, any kind of cancer that run in the family. Of course, it's very important the lifestyle of about the patient, including diet, uh, social uh, history. Uh, for example, if they were feeding the child, if they are in uh, oral anticontraceptive pills related with the breast cancers. And it's very important just advice to the patient come to the consultation with any relative, friends. You don't be alone when we give you the feedback about the test result to the patient. How could DNA testing radically change our approach to cancer detection and survivorship? Well, it's a very, very good question because uh, the two more cells when they die, relieves DNA into circulation, resulting in a presence of the circulation tumor DNA in the blood of the patients. For that, we have different methods, such as test sensitivity and tumor biology. This helps us a lot to detect the cancer in the blood of the patient and, of course, measure survival, how is the treatment, um, amount uh, about how many DNA of the tumor we can find in the blood patient. We can have an idea about uh, the relativity, about the aggressivity of the, the, the cancer indeed, the survival about the patients, and the probability that this uh, could be, be increase the probability that the cancer return again. So it's very important, the two methods that we are having, because uh, it's very beneficial to the patient and to ourselves to continue with any treatment and to consider if we have to change. What role does genomic play in cancer management in the oncology practice currently, and how do you see these changes in the future? In my humble opinion, I think that it's very, very good because the genomic uh, testing is designed to help us to detect the DNA who change and who could develop in the future, start to grow up and grow up in a specific tumor. These mutations are unique for any kind of individual and to develop any kind of type of cancer and help us, like a doctor, to identify the treatment and to design a very specific treatment 
to target this mutation in the DNA who develop this type of cancer. So you can see in the graphic how you can have the DNA, the amplification with the PCR, a technique in the lab, and after that, just market a specific drug that can be related with that mutation in the DNA that grew up and transformed in a cancer. Why family history is so important and how it helps us to make a further management about the treatment plan. Family history is very important because we can relate it with environment factors, another kind of factor, polygenic factors like we mentioned before, to make a treatment plan if the patient de develop any kind of, of cancer. What does family history include? Well, include a record of her information about person and his or her close relative, a complete record about the three generation of relative, including children, brother, uncles, niece, nephew, grandparents, cousin, everyone to make a perfect tree, family tree to consider if there is any risk of cancer to develop in this patient. In the point, point B, how to create this family tree? Well, recollect information with the patient, talk with the patient in the consultation and make further explanation about how everything is helped and in the consultation about any history about uh, the family. And in the third point, what advantage have that this well, we have a lot of advance because uh, we will have a very good idea about any kind of the disease that any relative of the patient have. What kind of disease is this related with cancer or other kind of disease? To summarize, managing genetic issue in primary care, we have to consider two issues. First, a patient with an avoid population risk of cancer is that kind of patient that perhaps can uh, have any kind of work, for example, which imply environment factors that is very important to develop any cancer indeed. And the other is the patient with a family history of cancer. Both of these two are extremely important to consider when we do it, the medical report to the patients. Many of the management principles are common to both cases. When applied in clinical practice, we also use our general skill, our considerations about what we have to do, what we have to ask, what tests we have to order to the patient, what uh, questions we have to make the patient about the family, and others' consideration with the medical team we are working with. Well, thank you very much. I hope that all of you enjoy this particular issue, which I concede and that is very important in medicine, especially in oncologists and in genetics as well. Uh, thank you for having me and give me this amazing opportunity.